much like a gourmet chef blends flavors, game developers often experiment by combining two different ideas or concepts to create a satisfying experience. And in games as in food, many combinations do not take shape and achieve mainstream success. There are people who like to mix chocolate with popcorn, but it's undeniably a niche flavor combination. Along the same lines, there are combinations of game genres like co-opus, first-person shooter, and back for blood's deck-building experience that work for some but are considered a failure. By others, at the other end of the spectrum are combinations so perfectly matched that they no longer look like combinations, but rather have a distinct harmonious flavor. Like chicken and waffles or peanut butter and chocolate, Saturnalia's deliberate combination of survival horror and rogue mechanics feels strange and daunting at first. But as it marinates, the game develops into a flavor profile of its own that will undoubtedly shape the future of horror gaming. Saturnalia is by definition a lofty concept, a simple idea. A group of playable characters trapped in the labyrinth of a small town are being chased by a mysterious monster as they try to unravel the mystery around them and escape. The game is essentially a mix of roguelite and metroidvania mechanics with the alien AI from Alien Isolation. When all of these individual elements are combined and placed into an independent horror aesthetic, and context, the resulting game is Saturnalia. After an innocent start, the game takes a completely sinister turn when Damiano betrays his pregnant lover, Anita, by seemingly summoning a demonic figure into her home. After this first encounter, the player explores the sleepy Italian village of Sardinia as Anita, slowly gathering a cast of equally confused and scared characters. The main and really only necessary objective is to simply escape Sardinia with as many living characters as possible. But as the player wanders the maze of Sardinian streets, it becomes increasingly clear that the village holds dark and deep secrets just waiting to be uncovered. While the player's only goal in ending the game is to simply escape with at least one character, the player can choose their degree of involvement in the events of Saturnalia's story. Naturally, in the search for an escape route, the player will come across clues scattered throughout the city and recorded in an in-game diary. As more and more clues are uncovered, the diary becomes a web of intersecting information that sheds more and more light on Sardinia's sinister nature. From recruiting citizens to teaming playable characters to unraveling the mystery of the monster's origins and finally executing an escape plan, Saturnalia offers the player an extreme degree of freedom. And precisely in that freedom lies the true beauty of the game. Supermassive's 2015 sleepover hit Until Dawn gave players the freedom to choose the actions of the characters in a typical horror film. Until Dawn featured choices like running in a certain direction or hiding at specific times. Saturnalia's approach is significantly broader, giving the player the freedom to make the same decisions from moment to moment influencing their overall goals. Artistically, Saturnalia is as ambitious and successful as it is in the category of storytelling. Not only is Saturnalia one of the best-looking games of 2022, but the game keeps pace in the discussion of the best-looking games of all time. The characters and their moving animations are actually expressive and evocative despite the complete lack of spoken dialogue. The game's color palette gives it a unique edge, bathing a game set almost exclusively in darkness in a believable and appropriate light. And the decision not to try a photorealistic art style has given the developers more leeway in human movement that violates the laws of physics in a way that makes for a downright terrifying experience. Layered underneath the graphics is sound design which is arguably even more effective at setting the mood. The rare instances where the music is dominated by high-pitched voices set a tone that is both haunting and extremely urgent. But it is in the use of silence that Saturnalia speak loudest. Walking the streets of Sardinia and hearing the footsteps of the player character, but also the footsteps of other citizens, accompanied by their doors closing when they hear the player approaching, clearly communicates the message that the player is in a place where T belong. The sense of urgency to escape. Saturnalia's sound design perfectly conveys a sense of haunting loneliness and unease, elevating the whole experience to the stratosphere. What's most unsettling about Sardinia's solitude is knowing that the player isn't alone at all. Being aware of the monster's ubiquitous wanderings keeps the player on the move and never wanting to stay in one place too long for fear of being found. That feeling of unease and tension and the player's heartbeat shoot through the roof at the sight of the monster's telltale yellow mist. The sight of fog and the sound of the monster's eerie clanking louder and louder throws both the player and the player character over the edge. These sensory signs of the monster's presence are only heightened by the combination of the way the monster is always portrayed as a simple black figure with large horns protruding from its head and its slow, extremely deliberate movements. Through body language, the monster gives the player a sense of futility and inevitability as the slow movements create no sense of urgency and only reinforce the fact that the player is trapped in Sardinia with this thing. As it stands, Saturnalia is truly an excellent game.
but the introduction of roguelite mechanics creates significant stakes not only for the characters, but also for the player himself. At the end of each game, the streets of Sardinia are rearranged, leaving the player as hopeless, lost and disoriented as the characters he controls. The threat of recast makes the player carefully consider each decision. While Saturnalia's roguelite mechanics work to make the game extremely difficult, and at times frustrating, the game's built-in accessibility features allow players of any skill level or investment to enjoy it. Instead of simple difficulty settings, the player can tweak specific elements of the game, such as endless matches, unlimited dash, and even completely disable the rearranging of mechanics to best suit his play style. Accessibility settings like those of Big Trouble and Holy Reason show a clear desire to make the game accessible and set a new gold standard for accessibility settings with regards to difficulty. Playing Saturnalia's wonderful blend of roguelite, survival horror and metroidvania mechanics makes you feel like you're one of the first people in the world to try peanut butter and chocolate. Big Trouble Game Studio and Holy Reason have created a brand new flavor profile that will be so popular in just a few years that audiences around the world won't be able to imagine a world before that combination existed. Saturnalia is available on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, S and PC. A PS5 code was provided to Game Rant for this review. Our rating, 4.5 out of 5. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.